and welcome back to the channel this is thomas ghost nostalgic and on this episode we're going to be building one last diorama for this tmnt NECA display now if you've watched my previous episode where i did a collection room tour i saved this display for the very end because this is what got me into the whole diorama building uh, world and then starting my youtube channel it was all based around building my first diorama which was the turtle layer and then i got the bug so i started making all these other dioramas i made the technodrome I made this sewer walkway and I have one more shelf at the bottom where I thought another display can go and that is Dimension X. And if you're like me, you're probably all in on this line and we know that there's tons of figures already out and then there's tons of figures coming out in 2023. So to really display these guys in an awesome way, you got to spread them out a little bit. And my whole goal with this channel was to show you how you can build a sweet display so that you can really give these characters the environment that they belong in. So you can put them on your shelf and just kind of snack them in one in front of the other, but if you really want to story build and get these characters on an environment all of their own, hopefully I can teach you how to do that. So if you want to start building some kick-ass displays for these figures, go ahead and watch my previous episodes of the Turtle Layer, the Technodrome, and the Sewer Walkway. But today's focus is Dimension X. So let's check it out. So I already pre-measured all of my foam and some of the sides are uneven, but that's okay because we're going to start hacking away at the edges of this foam to make some uneven rock wall texture. And I'm going to start magnetizing everything. So we'll go ahead and do that and then we can start adding some detail. So once most of my magnets are glued in, I go ahead and press the foam board against the magnets so you can see the circular indentation from those magnets. And then it's pretty easy for me to know where to dremel and go ahead and hot glue those in. And as I said before, I wasn't really worried about the pieces being uneven because I'm just taking my Sharpie and drawing an outline and I'm gonna take my hot wire tool and just really rough this up. So it doesn't matter if it's uneven, this is all going to be cut off at the corners and the edges anyway. Thought it'd be cool to put some holes in so you can see the display from the side as well. Now I'm taking my hot wire tool and I'm just going along the edges just to give me that really uneven surface, just to make it look like some rock side and then I'll go ahead and do this wherever I use that sharpie. Now all of this can be done with a knife but I'm lazy so I'm going to use my hot wire tools and it makes really quick work of cutting holes or just cutting out all those ridges. So a lot easier of a tool to work with but if you have a knife you can go ahead and use that. Now I'm just gonna rub some aluminum foil all over all of the surfaces just to give it that nice rough texture. And it's time for priming, so I need more. I'm gonna mix some Mod Podge and some black acrylic paint. And I usually like to do half and half, just as long as the mixture isn't gray. So I keep doing it until it's nice black. And the prime of the backdrop is dry, so I'm going to go ahead and start painting it. Now, there weren't many references to Dimension X, but from what I did see, the sky was either really red or really purple. So I have more shades of purple, so I'm going to go with that. Now, this is a technique that I love to do. You basically put the darker colors on the outside and work your way with the lighter colors towards the middle. And then all you do is take a kitchen sponge and just blot it. And this will give you that really cool kind of vortex effect or galaxy pattern. I'm not going to sprinkle any stars on it, but you'll see in the end, this does come out pretty cool. And 
and this backdrop will act as my toxic waste or polluted sky in the background. We're going to put some rock face on the front just to give it some depth and make it look like it's in the distance. Now this was kind of an afterthought, but I'm going to take all of the pieces that I cut from around the pieces of foam that I had and I'm going to carve these into rock. Now this is going to act as one, just to give it some dimension, but two, um, it's going to go on the bottom shelf, so I want to make sure this is protected from my pets and also from the figures falling down onto the ground and breaking. So just grab whatever scraps you have lying around. I'm going to make them all different shapes and sizes, and all you need for this is a knife. Carving rocks, it takes a while, but it actually does come out pretty good. It's going to go the length of the diorama, and I'm just going to glue all the rocks together so it acts as that barrier for my figures. Then we're going to take this bigger piece of foam. It's a one inch piece of foam, and we're going to cut it diagonally, and I just want this to act as an elevator for some of the figures in the background so you can see everyone perfectly. So I cut it down the middle and then I'm just going to show you, I could use my hot wire tool for this, but just to carve rock, you can also use a knife and it'll come out just as good. So I'll at least show you both ways how to do that. And really there's no rhyme or reason to how I'm cutting, just make it random. That's why I like projects like this, it can be fast and loose and sloppy. Um, but all of those cuts are going to look super awesome when you start dry brushing it. So use the knife, pull pieces off with your finger. Either way, it's going to give you that natural looking rock formation. Now I've already started carving a few, but now we're going to start working on the rock. So I'll show you just how to carve it the same way you carve the side of that rock platform and you're just gonna chip away at this piece of foam and make sure the flat part is on the bottom because that's what's gonna glue or magnetize to the platform. And then we'll just do a whole bunch of these and I'll be right back because this is gonna take a while. And as expected, that took a pretty long time, but I got them all done, just got to glue. And then I did take some scrap pieces and those will go on top of the backdrop just to give it some depth, make it look like you're looking through kind of an archway of rocks. But we'll start gluing these all together and get, get them primed and then magnetized as well. Now I'm just experimenting with some colors. I want a kind of orangish brown, but I don't have orange, so I'm just mixing red and yellow into the brown, and it's giving me that color that I want. So once I'm happy with it, then I'll start applying the paint. And I've already started doing some dry brushing on the platforms, but I'm just taking this light tan and I'm just doing some light passes around the whole diorama. It's really bringing out the highlights on the edge of those rocks. And this was going to be one of my favorite parts of the project because after carving all that, those rocks and seeing how they look once you paint them and dry brush them, they do come out really awesome. So this is pretty much done. All I'm going to do now is add a black wash to everything. And once we do that, we can start adding some figures on. I also did magnetize some of the rock faces. So if I wanted to pull those off whenever I wanted, it'll be easy to do so.
And folks, we are done with our Dimension X diorama. Not a difficult build, so really all you do need is a knife and some paint, but I use some special tools just to kind of speed up the process, but I am loving the way that this came out. I can't wait to get it underneath my Technodrome diorama. I think this is going to look super awesome. Thanks for sticking around, folks. If you like this content, hit like, hit subscribe, and ring that bell so you get notifications when I post my next episode. Until then, we'll catch you next time.